All right, we're back. Welcome into another Auburn live show. Hope everybody is doing uh, doing awesome, doing awesome on this uh, Thursday morning uh, when you're listening to this uh, podcast on Apple or Google or Spotify or you're watching us on YouTube. If you're watching the show on YouTube, make sure and subscribe and, and turn the notifications on uh, so that, that you'll get notified when we put new stuff up. But subscribe and um, get tuned in. And then, of course, we're at AuburnLive.com. Make sure and subscribe to AuburnLive.com, part of the On3 Sports Network. We've had an amazing first couple of months of launch. Uh, Jeffrey Lee and I uh, go way back from from Rivals days, and and, and 20, I've, I've been at twenty four seven, and so this is my third uh, third group to be at. But it's amazing what On Three is doing. So make sure you subscribe at AuburnLive.com and be a part of our team. All right. Without further ado, special guest today, uh, former Auburn cornerback, NFL vet Gerard Powers. Gerard, what's up, man? What's up, my man? How everybody doing? Good man, I appreciate you joining us. How's how's life? Catch people up on uh, kind of what you got going on these days. Uh, life's good. I'm kind of a house dad uh, right now since I retired. So whatever my wife allows me, uh, I do. But I got a nine year old, a six year old, and uh, about to be two year old, all boys. So uh, hands be kind of full uh, during the course of school with everybody playing sports and different things. So uh, I'm kind of I'm kind of that that house dad, that that little league coach and uh, all those things uh, with a couple other things going on as well, as far as entrepreneur type stuff. But uh, just enjoying the, the kids experience as they get introduced to sports and just trying to uh, guide them in the right way, the best the best that I can. Man, I hear you. I'll be there soon enough, I guess. Man, I got two, <laughs> a two-year-old girl, uh, just a couple of months past two, man, and she's a handful. So uh, yeah, <laughs> that two, that two-year-old stage is it's it's pretty rough. That's what we're experiencing now with my my youngest. So it can it can get rough. It can frustrate yeah, she, you a little bit. <laughs> she's finding her. She's finding her voice. We'll say that. Gotcha. Uh, gotcha. So what, I'm I'm looking at that picture behind you. That's what 07? Oh yeah, 07, 07 at Auburn. Uh me and DJ Hall had a pretty good battle that uh that game. But yeah, 07. Is that the game? What's the game that the dog bit your hand? That, that's the one. Yeah, that's the one. Everybody forgets that pick and everybody just remembers the uh the, the, the dog bite. But that's the one. I do I do remember that pick. It was kind of a bobble. Uh you you were there, right? Like you, you tiptoed the back of the end zone, right? Right. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but man, that dog just that that pull. I knew it was that year. That play reminded me of that. It was wild. No, nah, that's um, hilarious. My little, I coach a ten U football team, and every week there's a different kid. That, hey, my dad showed me your YouTube videos. You got bit by a dog. Like literally yesterday at practice, I had two kids come up. Hey, I saw your videos over the weekend. You you got bit by a dog. So that's my <laughs> famous moment. So I'm pretty sure as I grow older and continue to go back to Auburn, everybody's still going to remember that. So. <laughs> Dude, that was wild. Did you get like legit? I mean, did it did it penetrate your skin? Oh, yeah. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Hand bleeding the whole nine. Uh if you look around college football now, the reason why you don't see police officers with dogs around the stadium like they used to back in the day, because that was their way of preventing fans to rush the field. Uh, but they had to, to remove the dogs because of that incident. So I'm kind of famous in that notion as well. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. You handled it pretty well. I mean, you you kind of just shook your hand and, and you couldn't quite tell how how bad it was. I bet that hurt. Though. Well, um, I, I knew it was I knew it was kind of bad. But Muschamp and the, the the staff we had on the sideline, they didn't nobody saw it when it happened. So when I went to the sideline and tried to explain, like, hey, I got bit by a dog. Everybody kind of just brushed me off. They thought I was joking or something until after the game. Well, of course, ESPN broadcasting and they was replaying it uh, live on TV. But after the game, all the reporters and everybody uh, kind of, I guess, was brought to attention to it. And that's when everybody kind of came and apologized to me about their reaction when I was trying to explain that my hand uh, was bleeding from six puncture rooms from the dog. <laughs> that was wild, man. Um well, how's life? Uh, before we get into talking about Auburn football, how's life kind of out of out of football, man? You had a nice NFL career, mm -hmm. um, and then now you're out of it. Sort of, how's it how's it transitioning out of Trans out of football, man? Transitioning, uh, pretty good. Uh, you know that old saying. You know, a lot of players have their struggles uh, when you get done with the game, just trying to redefine yourself, trying to find different passions, uh, and trying to attack it the same way that you attack the sport that you played. So uh, initially, it was kind of I don't want to say too hard, but, you know, just waking up, not having an itinerary to go off of, 
uh, kind of like you've been accustomed to ever since you, you know, been to college and all and so on through your NFL career. That was an adjustment I had to get used to. So just trying to stay busy, uh, stay active and doing things and not just sitting in the house all day uh, was something I had to kind of force myself to get out of. Because when you play for so long and, you know, football has been so important to me since I was like eight years old, I've been on a football type schedule. Uh, you play so long when, when it's over, you kind of don't know what to do unless you just got some other things already lined up. So it kind of took me a couple of years of trying to find different passions that uh, that I kind of can attack the same way that I attack football. Um, <clears throat> who recruited you to Auburn? Don Don and uh, Philip Lolly was my my two uh, recruiting coaches uh, when I was getting recruited back in high school. Yeah, I was thinking I was I felt like it was Lolly, but I wasn't quite sure. I still see him around Auburn. Um, uh, man, Philip Lolly could he could pick some corners out. Yeah, he was he was pretty good at it. Yeah, he he kind of bragged about it. that was his thing. He he used to always brag about the corners he got to come to Auburn, even even from walk-ons like Rod Hood to yeah. Carlos to to myself, Patrick Lee, Walter McFadden, all those guys. He kind of had a hand in that. So uh, I mean, he he got a good resume when it come to corners coming to Auburn. Yeah, that's a that's a bunch of guys. Uh, did you ever think about staying in, in, in the NFL or coaching in, in college, defensive coordinator, cornerbacks coach, something like that? Oh, yeah. Uh, still still got aspirations and, and dreams of doing that. Had some opportunities uh, as soon as I retired. Every year so far, I've had an opportunity to either go to the NFL or college level uh, to start that whole, you know, journey of coaching. But I just feel like right now with me being so busy, me having kids, uh, I think I think it's real important for me to kind of give my time to my family until I feel like I'm I'm truly ready to jump back into that profession. Because like, you know, and everybody else, you know, once you're in it, man, that, I mean, it, that that comes first at the end of the day. I mean, you're going to be so busy, might miss out on some things that your kids are going to have. And I just want to make sure I'm, I got a huge presence uh, in my kids' life and my family's life until I get back serious and uh and and doing the coaching thing, whether it's on the college level or NFL level. Yeah, yeah, I think you'd be outstanding at it. Um, all right, let's jump into a little bit of Auburn football. Uh, let, let's start with Brian Harson, just general, because I've never really had a chance to get your thoughts on on him. Um, I know you've probably spent limited time with him. He, he's he got to Auburn and kind of hit the ground running, but. Just from what you've seen of him, from talking to you know former players, Letterman, what's your impression of of him uh, and how he's trying to build this this program? You've been around a lot of coaches, a lot of leaders. What's your impression of kind of what you hear from him, what you see from him so far? I, I love it, man. I think he's real big on the little things. Uh, obviously, the big things kind of take care of itself, but if you can take care of the little things and uh, make sure – those type of things are are always uh, and I guess the most important when it comes to running your program. Um, everything else will fall in line. And right now, I think he's in that that transition on just trying to continue to instill the culture that he wants to instill. And at some point, it'll all click. Um, I know we're not kind of getting into the season right now, but if you just look at the way we play, it's different. I mean, I know we're making mistakes and, you know, we got a lot of things we can work on, obviously, but those guys play hard for them. You can tell that they're trying to do everything that he's asking them to do. And that's what you can, that's all you can ask for in your first year as a coach. As long as everybody is accepted, the new culture is on the, on board with the new culture. At some point it's, it, it's all going to click. And I think he's doing a good job in, in instilling that that culture that he wants to have for our program. And uh, I'm excited. I mean, I think we're off to a, a, a good start. Of course, we got a tough schedule, you know, playing Penn State on the road, top five team, playing Georgia early in the season, top five, top three team, and uh, still having a chance to control your own destiny in the West. That's all you can ask for. And with the games that we got coming up, I think these games coming up are the most important. And it's going to show really – what direction our program is headed to. Um, you know, our fan base can be tough sometimes. You know, everybody wants to see us win right away. And, you know, obviously I'm that too. I mean, I'm at the Georgia game this past weekend and I, I wanted to throw my phone on the field about five or six different times. But, you know, it, it don't happen overnight, man. It just never does. I mean, you look at Alabama and Nick Saban back in that 2007 year, and, you know, they lose to Louisiana Monroe. They go six and six. And then all of a sudden that next year, they end up turning things around. So I think our fans just got to be patient and just uh, 
kind of be patient and look at the little things that we're doing differently uh, than it was in the past. And the thing that I see the biggest improvement on, even though we uh, lost the Penn State in the Georgia game, I do believe that our guys are playing hard uh, for Harsons and trying to do everything that they can to, I guess, fulfill the goals that's that's been set for them. Um, before we before we move on, just talking about culture and and, and what Harson's doing, I I'm kind of curious what it was like uh, when Tuberville was there in terms of a culture aspect. It's been a while, um, and I was trying to kind of think back to to that time. I feel like stuff is like culture. I feel like all this stuff has changed in football so much now that's like, and there's so many tools and resources to talk about leadership and culture and like shaping people. I feel like now coaches are are more maybe in tune with uh, how, how to develop leaders and like, you know what I mean? Whereas yeah. back then I think about the Tuberville days, I just feel like you just went out there and it was like, suck it up, play hard. Like it, it was maybe a more raw type of culture. I don't know. It, it, how, 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 how do you think about the that, culture now and the way they talk about it versus when you were. You that, know, prob- that, that probably was a good word uh, that you used to describe it as in raw. Um, it, it wasn't like Coach Tubb used to walk in the mean room and say, hey, Quinn Groves, you're the leader. Hey, Dry Powers, you're the leader or or whatever. You, The leaders are kind of had to, I guess, come out during the course of the offseason. You know, the, those offseason workouts, those spring, the, that, that spring and all those things, leaders kind of emerge on their own. So it was a real big, co- big team first type culture. Uh, Coach Tubb never was the type of guy that was going to, speak much if that makes sense he was kind of like the ceo of the building and whatever he told the assistants he let the assistants handle everything and whenever he spoke of course everybody listened but nobody ever saw coach tub coaching anybody you know during practice telling trying to coach a technique or whatever the case may be he kind of let his assistants uh handle those duties i remember i used to meet with him weekly just on the leadership board And uh, he used to talk about when he was an assistant at Miami and he got Ray Lewis and all these guys and used to talk about the things that he used to instill in them. So uh, once he got to the head job, he he treated that the same way that I guess his experience at Miami was. Uh, He kind of let his assistants be their own head coach of their room, if that makes sense. Uh, He used to, you know, say things that he want done. But he never used to tell assistants how to get those things done. So he put a bit a big onus or a big importance on the assistants and getting those things done. And I think it used to work um, because whenever we go in the defensive room, we never had to worry about Coach Tubb coming in there, calling out anybody or telling people this is how I want it done. He, he left it to the coaches and we knew we all had a responsibility to do. And then when we got together on Saturday, it just used to work. So um, just I guess, like like you said, a little bit more raw compared to today. Today, uh, with the social media thing, like when I was in college, Facebook, it just came out. So it wasn't a big social media uh, era back then. So now with social media era, you know, guys got their own brands now, you know, the NIL guys are making money and doing different things. So it's a lot more that goes into, I guess, the team concept compared to what it was back in the day. Uh, speaking of defense, see, you had, I'm trying to remember back, you had, was it, was it David Gibbs in, in 05? Yep. So, so I, I was, yeah, so when I got, when I signed, uh, Coach Chiz was still there when right, I signed, yeah. and then yeah. right before the spring, he took the Texas job. Uh, then we got Coach Gibbs. Uh, he came from the NFL, which he was great. Uh, we had a good year with him as well. So uh, we had Coach Gibbs. And then after a year, Coach Gibbs got another job back in the NFL, and that's when Muschamp right. came, and Muschamp was right. there for two years. Uh, and then when he left, uh, we got Coach uh, – I just went Paul blank. Rhodes. We got Coach Rose. Yep, we got yeah. Coach Rose that 2008 year. Uh, had a bad year that year, but we still finished top 10 defensively, even though we yeah. wasn't great as a team. We still had a great defense, though. Yeah, yeah. That, no, the defense was, was good that year, of course. <laughs> of course, everybody remembers three to two. <laughs> Uh, right. <laughs> uh, so, all right. So defense from, from what you were, you know, went through, obviously must champ, man, he, he could be really aggressive and dial up a lot of, a lot of blitzes. Um, what have you seen from Derek Mason? I was trying to think back of how Gibbs was, um, but what do you seen from Derek Mason where kind of, he's more of a zone guy, but I right. think you've seen him try to adjust a little bit LSU and then even Georgia where he needs to mix in more man and, and be a little bit aggressive. Um, what have you sort of seen from the defense and how he's trying to run things? And in the particular, 
that secondary is giving up some big plays. And, and, right. and how, how do they sort of what, – what are you seeing on the defensive side of the ball? I think from the start of the year, I think Coach Mason was really trying to just – run his system to where he he felt comfortable so you saw a bunch of off type coverages different zone type looks multiple coverages on one play type look uh guys you know if, if one guy motion the coverage might change so a bunch of communication has to be done in his system uh rather than the guys that we have they're just so used to just playing man to man because of the last coordinator we had you know they're just used to getting in guys faces and playing man to man and i think as the season continue to go on you see coach mason try to make the adjustments that fits the guy's uh ability that what he got yeah we we we've given up some plays in the secondary but i don't necessarily think it's because of Coach Mason's system. I think it's more so of guys just uh, not honing in on technique, communication problems, you know, things of that nature. I think it's been more so of us hurting us rather than it's a system thing, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. You know, everybody all I mean, every coverage you play, it's always a technique and it's always a responsibility. And as a player, you got to make sure you handle your responsibility. And right now, I just feel like we're just undisciplined in that aspect of it, just making sure we hone in on techniques and responsibilities and communication and things like that. And when you have a new coordinator, uh, what a, a bunch of fans don't realize when you have a new coordinator, the terminology part is the hardest part to kind of learn that communication part. So I think that's the part that we've been having issues with giving big plays. It, like I said, it, it's not a system or a call type thing. It's just guys going out there and just doing their job the way they're supposed to do their job. And uh, I, I, I do feel as the season go on, you'll see the secondary get better and better and better. I mean, with a new coordinator and the people that we face so far, like I say, the Penn State, the Georgia, um, I don't want to say you kind of expect those things to happen, you know, those busts and uh, MAs in the back end. But at that same token, I mean, when you're playing top five teams so early in the season, I mean, it's going to happen, especially when you play experienced teams like Penn State and Georgia. Uh, I mean, those things going to happen. But like I said, as the season gets going on, as we get further into the season, I do think our secondary is going to play a lot better. What's your impression of uh, Roger McCreary, just him individually a little bit? Because he 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 – he 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 reminds me of you. I don't know why. I just think there's your physical Man, players. I, love I mean, he's he tackles well. What, what, what he might be a he might be a. I mean, going into the season, he had some late first round grades. Oh yeah. I mean, he looks probably like I don't see how he goes past the second round. But what do you what do you see when you watch him? Man, I love him. I love his game. Um, uh, and warm ups of the Georgia game. Uh, I kind of gave him a little pep talk if that if, if you want to call it that before the game but he's a kid he's a serious kid you know he take his he take his craft serious i mean you can just tell by the demeanor i've seen him in the meeting rooms i've seen him at practice i've seen him on the on game day obviously so you can just tell his demeanor he has an nfl demeanor how how he goes about his business uh he's a man to man guy he can tackle he can play zone um you know i, I was actually texting uh Zach Etheridge uh a couple of weeks ago, I was just like, hey, man, I was like, tell Coach Mason to, to move him around, let him match up a little bit, because I think he's that good uh, to where you can kind of match him up with whoever's the opponent's best receiver and just let him play. Uh, but I love his game. He's had a phenomenal career. He could have got drafted last year if he wanted to. Uh, but he's definitely one of the top corners in the SEC and one of the top corners in the country for sure. Um, all right. Let's talk about uh, the, the, the Georgia game, man. Um, you were there. Georgia's really good. Oh, yeah. Um, how, how do we come out of that game? Do, do you look at it and say, hey, George is the best team in the country, clearly. So let's just kind of chalk it up like that and move on. Or are you sort of with Coach Harson and, and Bo Nix was sort of the same way after the game? Like they were they gave Georgia their due. But but just listening to them and listening to their tone, they were very frustrated. They really, really felt like they had opportunities to be in that game. I mean, they were really – they didn't just go, well, Georgia's really good, back to the draw. They were like – they were kind of mad. I mean, you could see, you could sense it. Like, we had chances to be in that game, and we and we kind of blew some chances. What Just what was your take on, on that game, and did you feel like Auburn, you know, should have been in that game in the fourth quarter? Oh, I, I felt the same way. I mean, 
not to take anything from Georgia, I mean, they're a great team, the best team in the country. I do believe that, you know, with the weapons they got, the running backs, the offensive, they have an NFL offensive line. Like, no, I, I believe their offensive line is bigger than most NFL teams. If you look at size, height, and all that, then you look at their defense and, and, and all the guys that's going to be future first round, second round draft picks. I mean, it's just crazy. But when you watch that game, uh, we had several opportunities to put pressure on them to make make it a game. I mean, we got to score points, obviously, like Harson said. I mean, I understand him deciding to go for it on that fourth down just to try to get some uh, a touchdown going into the half. While I was at the game, I was screaming, kick, kick the three just for confidence, get the three. But, you know, when you're playing those type teams, you know you're going to have to score some points and, and, and touchdowns to beat them. So I felt the same way. Um, once we didn't get the points – uh, when we was driving down the field, a couple chances we had to get points. I knew at some point we probably was going to break just because of how good Georgia uh, is. You know, nobody gave us a chance from our defensive line standpoint that we was going to hold up in the run game. And if you watch that first half and probably midway through the third quarter, I thought those guys held their end of the stick the best that they could to their ability. I think at half, they might have had 40-something yards rushing, 50-something yards rushing at half. And we're talking about – three, four Georgia running backs that's all going to get drafted at some point. Um, so I thought we played well enough to make it a game, but just like any other game with the momentum changing and all of that, when certain things happen in games, it kind of breaks you, you know, as a team. So when you're driving and you go for it on fourth down, you don't get it. It kind of, you know, knocks some air out of that momentum that you had building. And then when you come out in the second half and defense is making stops, Offense get it, go three and out. Defense get another stop. Then all of a sudden, boom, they hit a big shot on us and score. It kind of just, you know, it just takes that confidence out. But like I said, we played well enough to where if we score a point. It could have easily been 14-14 at half, you know, and it's a different ball game when you look at it. I remember I was sitting at the game and the friends that I was sitting by, I said, look, man, I said, Georgia got 180 yards total offense and we have 160 and we're down two touchdowns. So I think that kind of was showing people like we're we're right there with those guys. It's just Georgia's taking advantage of their opportunities and we're not taking advantage of ours. And that just shows you that we got a lot of things that we got to build on and work on until we become the team we want to become. Georgia didn't have any mistakes. They didn't throw interceptions. They didn't fumble the ball. They didn't they didn't have any mistakes in the game. And if you look at us, we more so keep hurting ourselves rather than the other team beating us, if that makes sense. So I definitely feel like Bo felt, like Harsons felt, how everybody else felt. We keep hurting ourselves rather than the other team beating us. But that just shows you the maturity of, you know, the Penn State, the maturity of the Georgia. You know, they're going to handle those situations well where we're still learning and we're still trying to find our identity on who we are. I mean, we still don't know who we are offensively. We still don't know who we are defensively. And uh, for us to play as bad as we played in those two losses and still have a chance to win at Penn State and then still had a chance to make it a game versus Georgia early, uh, I think it just shows you that we still got a, a long way to, to go as far as in growth. But if we continue to get better and better, man, we can still cause some damage uh, this season and have a great year. What's crazy is, I mean, Auburn still, I mean, look. One and one. And the Auburn still, West. you know, they're one and one. <laughs> Alabama lost. I mean, Al yep. Auburn still controls their own destiny. They still play Arkansas. They still play Ole Miss. They yep. still play Mississippi State and A&M and yep. Alabama. Yep. They, 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 they're one and oh in the West. They play, uh, you know, so that's, that's kind of wild. Um, and you're right, man. It's it is this season is complete trial by fire. I mean, to the extreme for Brian Harson in his first year, plays Penn State out of conference row on the road. Georgia, the best team in the country, one of the better teams, you know, one of the best defenses in college football ever. It, it, it's statistically yeah. <laughs> they're shaping up like that. And you've got Alabama and you've got Arkansas and Ole Miss who are merging in our top twenty. I mean, it is I can't Tough. imagine for for the for the future of Auburn pro the, the program and for Harson, heck, just throw it out there, have a just an insanely hard season first year, and let's get everybody up to speed. I feel like that's I feel like that's what's happening. I think you're right. By the end of the year, you could see a a different Auburn team. I mean, every week they're getting uh, molded big time. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And uh, like I agree with with everything you said right there. And uh, the one thing that I do notice. Uh, even though we got a lot of things that, that we need to work on, the guys play hard. They play hard for Harsons. And I, like I said, I think that's the biggest difference in last year and this year. 
I mean, we'll have some bad losses uh, last year, and it just looked like guys weren't playing hard, just period, just weren't playing hard. And uh, watching the guys this year and just watching the coaches on the sideline, like I've seen Hartson get on the boat more than I've ever seen any other coach ever yeah. get on to anybody. That's what you want. I mean, you want, you know, guys that's getting coached up daily. You know, you're not giving a pass to anybody. You want everybody to be held responsible for their job. And that's the good thing that I think Parsons is doing uh, as far as setting the tone on the culture. It don't matter if you're All-American. It don't matter if you're the last man on the depth chart. You know, everybody's getting coached and everybody is held to a responsibility that they have to fulfill. And, and you got to play hard at the end of the day. And I do believe we are doing those things, which makes me excited about the future with Harsons going forward because we're going to get better and better when he get the recruits back going and, you know, his guys that fits his system and all those things. I mean, I, I truly believe that we'll be right back up there on the pedestal with the other teams in the country as far as being one of the top teams. Yeah, I like his approach. And he said after the game, he said, look, Georgia's the kind of team we're trying to be, which yep. which uh, I think, you know, is probably true. If, if more so than even – you might say, well, we're trying to be like Alabama. But I think what Georgia does, especially this team, the way they run the ball, the way they're physical, Alabama has gotten so prolific in passing yeah. the ball and running the ball. Georgia has stayed a little bit more pound pound the football play yep. action. And it se that seems to be more the style that, that Harson wants to be versus – super prolific and passing, you know, and, and the way Alabama's kind of done with Bryce Young and Tua and all those guys, I think Georgia, what they do probably does fit more of what Harson wants yeah, to I, be. Yeah, no, I agree. I think Georgia reminds you of the 2011, 2012-ish Bama era. Uh, where yeah. they just got multiple running backs that you're just like, all right, who is this guy? Why is he just as good as the <laughs> other guy? You know, and then all of a sudden when you're so good in a run game and now you you know it's going to be an eight-man type box and then you go and recruit some big-time receivers and now they're just left out there one-on-one, -on -one, you know, for the play-action pass. And that's what Georgia does. They're going to pound, pound, pound to where they know if you don't put enough in a box, our backs are good enough to get four, five, six yards of carry. And uh, once you pound that box, we got great receivers on the outside that we know it's going to be one on one situations. And we like our chances with that. So when Harson said we want to be like Georgia's, I think some of the fans was given a lot of flack just because, you know, Georgia being a rival and all that. But but like you said, he wasn't saying we want to be Georgia. He said we want to yeah. be like Georgia. And uh, and I agree with him. That's the type of team you want to have. You know, you want to be able to run the ball and you want to be able to throw it when you want to throw it. So uh, we got we got two great running backs, obviously, uh, with Hunter emerging as one of the best running backs as well. Obviously, everybody knows what Tank can do. So if we can continue to get better in that run game, maybe it can open the thing up for the pass game. But I, I do feel uh, at the receiver position, we still need a guy to emerge as a playmaker. We need somebody to just step out of the box and say I'm that guy in this room and until that happens I think it's going to be a struggle I mean Bo gets a lot of slack you know even I gave Bo some slack here or there just being frustrated during the the moment of the game but when you go back and watch the game I think we had eight nine different drops and you know I mean it's just hard to win that way man so once we clean everything up though just looking at the system and the type of system Harsons wants to run once we clean everything up, get better, I do believe everything's going to click and everything's going to be good for us. Yeah, uh, Bo, and Bo's the most screw. I mean, I'm trying to think of, of just my I've, – I've followed Auburn football my whole life. You know, early on in his career, Jason Campbell caught a lot of flack. Um, certainly. Beacox used to catch some flack. That's my yeah, guy. Brandon yeah, 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 he did. He did. Uh, <laughs> Brandon did. Um, but Bo is right there with, with, with those guys as uh, – it's just it's hard for him to do right. I, I think, man, we've got enough film on Bo now to to be more fair in how you look at him. I mean, he, he's never had a great offensive line. He's had okay mm -hmm. offensive lines. He's never had – he's had okay receivers as a, as a unit. Seth is a great talent, but even he had some issues. He's like – so I, I think now we've got enough film on Bo to be fair. Are there things that Bo can do better? Yes. Of like course. there's some yeah. things that are built in – with Bo that you're just going to have to, he's just, he's a little antsy. He's got a little quick yeah. feet. Like you got to deal that's with a, it. That's but, what but, I was going to say. <laughs> but he's gotten, but man, some of the throws he made, you, you played in the NFL. But some of the throws he made in that Georgia game are Big some of the throws. best throws I've seen him ever make. I mean, he made some yeah. great passes. Yeah. Some of those throws, that, that back shoulder throw specifically, 
I was like, that's an NFL throw. Um, back shoulder throw to, to Robertson on the yeah. on George Island. That was an NFL throw. And the one that we dropped on third down where 11 won, won ready for it, that's an NFL timing throw. I mean, that's a yep. big time throw. I guess the only only thing that when I watch Bo that I wish that he would continue to get better at is once he recognizes the coverage and the defense. Like it was a couple of times that if he hits the back, like just right now, like not a second late, just hit him right now. Things just can open up. I mean, you give the ball to Tank when you know he's open right now. He might take a one-yard catch, 15 yards, 20 yards. Um, I hate comparing guys to other quarterbacks, but Mac Jones made a living of it. He's making a living yeah. of it now with the Patriots, just getting the ball out of his hands quick. And I think sometimes Bo just get in the hero mode to where he feels like every time he has to make a big play. And, uh, I mean, that'll happen, though, when you're not used to having a good old line You're used to – pressure being in your face all the time you might get antsy here or there uh but he has to continue just to work on that patience a little bit like i said everybody has something that they have to get better at but i do feel like it's unfair that bo get a lot of the blame of what's been going on the past two years could he be better yes everybody could be better uh but he's not the worst quarterback that we've had at auburn by any no. stretch at all <laughs> he's a classic he's going to be a classic example of when he leaves people it, maybe maybe not like maybe demetrius davis is a baller and the young kid that they have at quarterback and uh maybe they're great but it, it, i could also see a scenario where bo nicks leaves and you go well man, maybe it wasn't that bad it just right. always happens that way man, um, I, I remember it, when uh him and malik willis was kind of battling it out and then yeah. everybody i remember in that spring game i think malik didn't have a good spring and everybody like, oh, he can't throw, whatever, whatever. Yeah, he needs to transfer, whatever, whatever. And then now you look at Malik, you know, in a system that fits him with Hugh Freeze, and now he might be the, the top quarterback in the draft this year. So you just never know. I mean, I, uh, as a fan, sometimes I don't think enough fans do their research and how hard it is to play the quarterback position and everything that comes with it. Uh, but at the end of the day, I mean, these guys are here for a reason. I mean, if we didn't think that Bo could handle, you know, the job at quarterback, they, he never would have been at Auburn in the first place. I mean, I got to see Bo in high school when I was helping out with a high school that beat us in the quarterfinals. And I was I remember talking to his dad after the game and I was just like, man, you got to make sure this guy goes to Auburn. Like he don't need to go anywhere else. Uh, so I do think he has a talent. It's just a matter of us getting the right pieces around him and, and it fits, you know, so uh, you just never know what will happen in the future. Yeah, I I I I'm, I hope Bo stays for another year. I think people are caught up in it, but I see some little things in him that I, I think potentially Bo could have a fantastic season next year if he keeps developing and just right. tries not to get too frustrated. Uh, I think he could be in for a great redemption story in his senior year. Um, hey, I wanted to ask you about Harson a, a little bit um, and kind of compare back to. Your time in, in, in the Tuberville era um, and, and those guys, because recruiting went well then. In this day and age, man, recruiting's all over the place. Like, I mean, you you gotta you gotta cater to I these. Can't keep to up these, with it. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, and then when they get here, you gotta de-recruit them. But from what we've understood from Harson so far, he's very businesslike. Um, I mean, he is serious. Like in press conferences, trying to. If, I feel like it's really hard to impress Brian Harson, and and just you might ask him a question about how somebody played, and they might have had a fantastic game, and he'll be like, "Yeah, yeah, you know." I mean, he's just businesslike, mm -hmm. and and that's sort of been some of the talk on the recruiting side is that they're so businesslike. Um, what do you think about that? And and do you have to be more fun when you recruit? How is Tuberville and those guys? Are they going to need it, or can you get away with just being? Super business all the time. We're here to play football, 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 football. That's it. Nothing else matters. Um, because that's kind of his personality. How do you sort of see that in the yeah. in the recruiting? I mean, it's, it's it's different ways to skin a cat. I mean, you see, like for instance, we can talk about Gus. Gus had the the Gus bus and had all the the antics that made the whole recruiting thing look appealing, mm -hmm. uh, if that makes sense. And then if you look at the other school on the in the other side of the state. You know, it's more serious. It's more business like you look at George, it's going to be more business like it's just those guys have gotten so successful to where their program sells itself, uh, if that makes sense. And I think Harson has that same approach. At some point, our program will sell itself to where the business like is going to match uh, the, the play on the field. So I just think it's going to take time. And then you got to remember, you know, he hasn't been in this SEC war of recruiting. This is all new to him, how. 
just the competitive side of every coach in the SEC trying to get all these top guys. So I think the business, like, you know, depending on who you are as a recruit, you'll love it or you're going to hate it at the end of the day. And if you're going to hate it, you don't want that guy coming to your school anyway if he's not going to like the business approach that you run your program. So uh, I think now he's going to be real selective on, you know, who, who we're recruiting, the guys that, that fit the system and all that. And there'll be guys that's similar to his personality, if that makes sense. When I was getting recruited by Tub, I knew he was laid back in recruiting. He was laid back when I got to Auburn. So I knew that I knew I wasn't going to be dealing with Tub much when I got to Auburn. I knew it was going to be an assistant coach type type deal, if that makes sense. Um, when I was getting recruited by Alabama and Mike Shula was there, it was the same thing. I knew he didn't talk. Much. I knew Shula wasn't a big rah rah talker guy. So when when I had a best friend in high school that signed with Alabama there, and I remember he used to call and say, "Yeah, Shula was the same way he was in recruiting. You know, he's not a rah rah guy. The, the guys that that um, that's our assistant coaches are the ones that's running the show at the end of the day. So I think the whole business like approach." It's just going to determine the kids that that you're going to recruit. You know, you're not going to get the guys that just want to come to Auburn because of the glitz and the glamour, you know, Bruce Pearl and the stands with his shirt off. Like his approach to recruiting is different. You know, he's <laughs> yeah. more of a, you know, he want to, I don't want to call it flashy because I love what he does, but that's who he is personality wise as well. You know, uh, what you see with Bruce on the recruiting trail, that's how he is in the gym with those guys. So the guys that are coming to Auburn, it's almost expected uh, on what they expect from Bruce. And I think Harson, I have the same approach. The guys that come to Auburn, it'll be more business, more business like uh, on the approach side. All right, let's end on this. Um, obviously, fans, I think fans are trying to figure out, you know, how do they approach um, – Harson, how do they approach this new this new culture, the new program? Like, what are acceptable expectations? What's a good season? It's I don't remember. I, I don't. I'm trying to think back to. It's weird because Gus's first year was they went. You know, they lost one right. game. It was just. It was just a. It was a unique, special right. season, and that and he could never live up to that. Um, I think back to Tuberville in '99, went five and six, and then won the West his second year. But I just see Harson's first season. I just I mean the criticism and I mean it is heavy. Like there's not a lot of slack being given to year one. I mean, not not a lot. Um, what would your message be to to fans, supporters of the program when they're trying to figure out they're kind of watching this year one? You've been right. in a lot of locker rooms and seen a lot, you know, good good teams, bad teams. Like, how do you gauge sort of how to take a step back, let him have a year? Like just kind of how are you approaching watching Harson and trying to figure out if he's the man for the job and what the future might hold? Well, I didn't I went into this season knowing that we didn't have a championship team for one as a fan, because I'm truly a fan now. Like I'm that guy that when we lose, I don't want nobody to be around. I don't want to go watch games with our other friends, <laughs> nothing like that. So I'm a true <laughs> fan now. Uh, but I went into this season knowing that, you know, we got a lot of stuff that, that that we're missing that we need as a team right now, obviously. And my message to the fans would be just stay patient. I mean, we're going to win some big time ball games this year. We've been in, like I said, that Penn State game, they're the number four team in the country. And we had a shot to beat them. So we're going to have our shares of winning games. I just think as a fan, you just hope to see improvement. Every week, every week, every week, just see improvement. And then you're going to know what type of team we have. You're going to know, all right, once he get his recruits in that fits this system, once we get another big time receiver, once we get the D line, once we get some O line, like you're just going to know once we get the guys that fit, it's going to work. So to the fans sake, just stay patient. I mean, off of last year's season, you knew we won we didn't have the pieces that we need to compete at the highest level and, and be a championship team this year. Not saying that that I, I was hoping that I was wrong in that. But as a fan, we just got to be patient and just hope that we see improvement week in, week out. And then by the end of the year, we'll know going forward for sure. Like, oh, I can't wait next year. We got this guy coming back, this guy coming back, this guy coming in. We're going to do this. We got these guys on the schedule. You're just going to know after this season what to expect going forward. And just as a fan right now, you just hope to see – improvement week in week out and I do think like in to, to my eyes I've seen improvements from the first game into now um just in little things like I said the playing hard I thought our D-line played 
better than it's played uh, against Georgia than it has in the past. I mean, you see us getting pressure on the quarterback a little bit better. I know I know all those things can be better, but you see it improvement week in, week out. And that's all you can ask for as a fan. All right, man. Well, I appreciate you coming on, dude. Um, so you got the foundation. Is there anything people need to know about that? Can, can people be a part of, of what you got going on there? Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, you can go to teamfreeze.org, uh, and it shows everything that we've been doing in the community. Uh, we, we pretty much help all of North Alabama the best way that we can, from furnishing apartments to relief help from disastrous storms and tornadoes and all that to mentoring kids. Like right now, we're setting up a mentor program in my son's elementary school to where we're going to be meeting with kids every Friday just to try to keep kids on the right track and doing things. So just a lot of fun and being a part of the youth and just trying to be a service to the community. Uh, so you can go to teamfreeze.org if you want to donate or if you want to just be a part or help or any type of way. Uh, all our contact information is on that. And it's team T E A M freeze Z yep. freeze. Okay. F R E E Z E. Okay. Team freeze. Yep. Um, awesome, man. Well, so you'll, you'll be back down. Are you, you try to get to games in Auburn? Uh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. So we, we went to the first game. We went to Georgia and we're probably going to try to come back for the iron bowl. We're in uh my not my nine year old is in the, towards the end of his tenure uh, football season. So our Saturday and I'm coaching. So our Saturdays are kind of, you know, busy. But uh, when we have off weeks, I definitely try to take them to some game, whether it's Auburn, UAB. Uh, we just we just love going to different games. Like sometimes we'll go on the road. Uh, I, I normally try to take them on the road to an Auburn game just to experience another another school's atmosphere and all that. So we're just big fans of the SEC period and just try to have a lot of fun during uh, football season, going to a lot of NFL games as well. Man, that's awesome. Well, if you get a chance, College Station is uh, is a great is a great environment. That's a that's a cool trip. Yeah, I heard. I got to I got to go there. So I heard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's gonna be a, a good one this year when Auburn heads there. All right, Gerard, thanks so much, man. We're, I'd love to have you back on soon. That was fun, and uh, and we'll we'll maybe get you back on um in a couple weeks and and catch up and see how this Auburn team's doing. Yeah, for sure. Just let me know, my man. Appreciate you having me. You got it. All right, appreciate it, Gerard. Thanks everybody for listening. AuburnLive.com. Make sure you subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Bye.